we have a crime scene, we have a footprint. So we've been given some data here and we can kind of see it's based off of a different county, shoe print size, the age of the person, and then the height. What we would like to do with this data, and again, you, you can do pretty much what you want. You might want to see does height depend on age, does height depend on shoe print, and so on. But what we would like to do, since we're at the crime scene, is we would like to know if we have a shoe print size, could we predict a height? So that's what we're interested in. And we're only interested in a particular county. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, probably the easiest way is you can highlight all your data. So I, I tend to just click this left up here, okay? If there's nothing over here, and these are just images. And then I just go to data, and I can go to sort, and I can tell it to sort, um, based off of a particular column okay so that's kind of what i what i would like to do so i could sort it say by county another option you have is if you're within your data set here you can click the filter and then you could only see a particular county so i could say just give me that county okay so whichever way you want i tend to um, sort things because I'm always afraid that skipping cells. So, no, so notice if I, let's just filter by this one county. Notice the numbers here, okay, over on the side because these were actually in order. If I had them some Grafton County down below, or if I pick, say, this one, notice it's skipping from 17 to 28. Not a big deal, but again, not a big fan. I just tend to sort my data and then I choose what I actually want. All right, so I'm looking at what's the independent variable and what's the dependent variable. My independent variable is X. So independent variable. My dependent variable is my Y. The easiest way I think of this, what depends on the other? Does the shoe print size depend on the height? Or would their height depend on their shoe print size? Also, what are you trying to predict? Okay, so typically we will say your Y is, in this case, what you're actually trying to predict. So my X variable here then, just put a equals X, widen that so you can see it and then put an equal y. All right, so I know, what, I know what I'm doing now, hopefully, that I have my independent variable, my dependent variable. So I wanna see what this data looks like. Now, I only care about shoe print and height for this one county. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click and drag and highlight those values. And then notice they're not side by side. If they were side by side, it would be easy, right? You could just do that, but they're not. So what you have to do is you hold the control key. I am holding the control key down on my keyboard. And now I highlight these values, okay? And you can do them for whatever county you wanna do. So from here now, I would just like to see what the data looks like. So I'm gonna go to insert, charts, and I just want a basic scatter plot. So that's what the data looks like. Um, I'm a little picky. I mean, that's good enough to see, but I'm kind of a little picky on things like I like to know what this data is. So I click the little plus here to add the axis title. And so I know this is shoe print in centimeters. <clears throat> How do I know that? Because it's on the X axis. And then this piece over here then I would know is the height also in centimeters. And then what I'm doing is I want to predict height based off of the shoe print. All right, so it's just me. I like kind of naming these. And you can see all these nice little different ways you can for format as well. The other thing that I think is kind of weird when I look at this is all the data is over here. 
if you click, so notice here if I click on one of these, and in fact, I'm going to go here. Um, you can see all the different things where you can do chart styles, color schemes, filters, and all that kind of good stuff. And so you can click on each one of these. I'm going to go ahead and tell it, you know, based off of my chart title here, I want some more options. Okay, and I really just want more options for this. So when I click on this axis, notice, so click on different things. Notice this is changing over here. If I click on the data, this changes. If I click on this one axis, it gives me other options here, such as why do I need to start at zero? Now, you will have a lot of math teachers that say you should always start at the origin, zero, zero. I just, in this case, want to kind of zoom in on this data and I see that, you know, my smallest shoe print, maybe, you know, I could even start this, say, at 20. And then notice what happened. It kind of spread out my data so I can see my data a little better. Again, that's just kind of something I like to do. Okay, you might get an argument from a math teacher that says you should always start at zero, zero, which is fine. You know, you can zoom in also as well on the data. All right, so I have the scatter plot the way I like it to look. Uh, it appears to me that there is a positive correlation. Why would I say that? It looks like as the shoe print size goes up, the height goes up. Okay, and that could even be something here with the height. I could do the same thing. I could actually spread out. Let's just make this start at 100. And now I can kind of see that trend a little better. Okay. So I can, I can see with this data, there is some kind of trend going on. I mean, there's, you know, that might be an outlier right here, but there is some trend going on with this data that it appears as the shoe print increases in centimeters, so does the height. So what I want to do is I want to come up with an equation that will put a line, the best fit line, and Excel does this so nicely for you, by clicking again here on the plus. Over here, notice it says trend line, and I already put the line for you, but you want to add more options. Okay, so I go to more options. If you have the older Excel, I'm going to show you some other ways to do this as well. But um, here now, it allows me to pick linear. This looks pretty linear. I can also display the equation of this line on the graph. Now, this is important. If you look at this equation, you have probably seen this before way, way, way back in your algebra days. Remember y equals mx plus b, where this value is the intercept, meaning if this line kept going down, it would hit 0, okay, where my x is 0, it would hit it here. Um, not a lot of need for the intercept in this example because what this is saying is when the shoe print size is zero, that's the height. Okay, so that probably doesn't make much sense, but whatever, it's there. And then, of course, if you remember the mx, this, this value, when it's positive, that's a positive slope, and hence, once again, why the data is going up. All right, so we have a regression equation. Now, we're going to use this equation for a couple of things. We're going to use it to see how well we're actually predicting the data that we know, and we're going to also use it to predict a value that we don't know. All right, now I mentioned, I'm going to close that, get this kind of out of the way. I mentioned that there is actually another way to find this regression equation. There's actually two other ways. One, there is a formula for the slope, and there is a formula for the y-intercept. So if I go into a blank, I'm, these are just labels, they're not doing anything. If I go into a blank cell and I type an equal, S-L-O-P-E, looky looky there, open a parentheses, you have to be careful it wants the y values first. So I'm highlighting all the graphed and y values, I'm putting a comma, and I'm graphing all the X values, and I close my parentheses. Looky, 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 looky. Based off rounding, that's the same value. 
The y-intercept, they actually just call the intercept, and you do the same thing. You type intercept for your formula, you do the y's, you highlight the x's, and looky, looky there. So that's another way if you um, cannot figure out how to get that equation on your graph. A third way is the data analysis tool, which a lot of people like. You click on data, and you go to, uh-oh, if it's not there, and it probably is not, unless you had to use it for another class, no problem. You go to File, Options, Add-in, because you're going to just add in an Excel add-in, Go, and right there, Analysis Toolpath. And I click OK, and ba-bam, there it is. I click Data Analysis, and you're going to see this actually has a lot of really nice stuff in here to do very quickly in a statistics class. But the only one I care about is, hey, regression. So I click that. It tells me where are your Y values. You could either type this in, but I'm kind of lazy. So I click the up arrow, and I click and drag my Y values, and I click to go back. I click the up arrow, and I click and drag my X values, and I click to go back. Um, where do you want to output this? I don't know. I probably could output it down here somewhere, just out of the way. And then I simply hit OK. And you get all this information, and my footprint's in my way. You get all this information down here, but look at that. This right here, oops, I didn't mean to make it red, but we'll make it red. It's important. Is these exact values, your intercept and your slope. So that just gives you a couple of different ways to actually come up with your regression equation. All right, so now what I'm going to do is see how well I'm actually predicting the values that I know. Let's, let's kind of highlight these because this is what I'm interested in. Well, I just used my regression equation. This line is predicting, and you can kind of see values that not predicting that one very good, not, not predict, oh, that's predict, and some of these are predicting quite well. I want to see how well it's predicting, so I use my y equals mx plus b equals, I'm going to click on my slope. Now, I want to copy this formula, so I'm going to do an absolute reference. You can click F4, and all it does is put dollar signs for an absolute reference. I believe it's like Command F4 on the Mac. I don't have a Mac, but I believe that's it because I don't want this cell to ever change. Note, look at your formula here. It's the slope times your x value plus your y-intercept that I don't want to change either. So I hit F4. When I hit Enter, and so we can kind of look over here, we're going to see this is going to underpredict because the prediction line is under the value. It didn't underpredict. What happened? Well, I thought I was at this actual point. So you have to be careful in what's kind of nice. Notice 32.4. You can find, you can go around on these actual points. So it looks like it's this value. Oops, I'm trying to click. It looks like in this case, it's this value a little bit above here. Okay, so just be careful because I did not put these in order that you're actually looking at the correct values. So if I look here, it looks to be, you know, looking through all of these values, it looks to be this value here is this one. So and you can kind of see it when you put your mouse over it, okay? All right, so I did this formula. I'm going to double click on it so you can see it again. Why did I absolute reference? Because watch this baby go. Click and drag that corner. It does the formula for every single cell. So now I can go through here and I can kind of look and see, or what might be easier to do is figure out what is my error, which is my predicted value minus my actual value. So you can see, and I'm gonna drag, copy that down. You can see easily by looking at this, this is under prediction while under predicting while it's negative. So anything negative is under predicting. Oh boy, look at that bad boy right there. So no, it's not going to be perfect. And that's something you have to realize 
it's only as good as your data. If this data was clumped together and all real close to that line, you wouldn't have values this far off. You know, you wouldn't have anything that's like, wow, that's not a very good prediction. Because what it's trying to do with this line here is it's trying to actually find, okay, the closest value to all of these. So you might be, well, why didn't it move it closer to this value? Well, guess what? You've made more error to this value. All right. Now, why would you even, your question should be, why are you doing this? Because you already know their shoe print and height. All right. We're back at the murder scene and we have a shoe print and it's a different size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I just right clicked. I'm just going to put a couple of, I mean, you can do this in any cell, anywhere you want. And I'm going to say, what if I know a shoe print that's not in here? Okay, so let's say I'm looking, I don't see it, 33.2. Notice it copied the formula. That would be my predicted value. So if I'm at a crime scene and I find a shoe print that is 33.2 centimeters, I can go tell the, the popo, right? I can tell them this is my prediction at this crime scene of the height of the person you're looking for. And it's just, I mean, this is a very powerful tool in statistics. And hopefully you get excited about this and you want to grab data and see how to make your own predictions with it. Have fun.